Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. Today we're right in the middle of a project working on a heavy barreled 1876 Winchester trying to get it functioning properly so we can shoot it again. Now one of the issues with it is the set trigger wasn't working properly. So when we opened it up we found right away that it was missing one of the three flat springs that operates that set trigger mechanism. Specifically the center one, the big thick one um, called the knockoff spring. Now fortunately I had three of them that, to choose from and as I was looking through them only one of them is the right contour. So before I put that one with the proper contour into the gun, I need to use it as a template to bend the other two into position or into the right contour. In order to do that, we need to heat them up, which is going to take the heat treat out of those springs. So we're going to have to re heat treat them and then temper them. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, we're going to take a few minutes, make kind of a mini how-to episode on heat treating and tempering flat springs. Okay, so here's these three springs we were talking about. These, um, a lot of people call them a kickoff spring. Winchester actually referred to them as a knockoff spring. This center one here is the proper contour. If you look closely, you can see this one on the left kind of kicks off to the, to the left a little bit. My, my pointer's magnetic, unfortunately. And the one on the right kicks off to the right a little. So we're, we're going to have to heat those up to bring them back because they're so thick we can't really bend them. So, now some really thin flat springs like, like this uh, sear spring here that's so thin, sometimes you can, if you're real careful, you can bend those without um, heating them up and losing the heat treat. If you're, if you're not careful, of course, you can break them pretty easily. And those are pretty easy to make, but these, these are pretty difficult. Now let's turn these up on edge a little bit. So they, that kick off to one side or the other is, is one of the problems, but you can see this one on the left, actually right out towards the end where the round spot is, um, it kicks up really hard right there at the end. And, and so that makes this spring too, too uh, strong. You can't hardly get it all together again. And you can see how difficult these springs would be to make. They're, they they start out thick down here in the base and they get thinner and then curve up and then we've got this rounded spot up here on the end. So the gunsmith that made this one actually made the dimensions really good. Just didn't quite get the contour right. And it's a, it's a difficult one. This one on the right here, it's just kind of a mess. You see the, the contour is completely opposite of what it should be. Um, I think this one uh, was probably in a house fire or something and, and uh, got so, so red hot that it lost its heat treat and temper and just bowed the wrong way. That one's going to be kind of difficult to get just that right arc in it, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. So stick around. We'll get uh, over to the torch and get these things heated up and see if we can't get them contoured the proper way. Okay, so I was getting ready to heat this spring up, but I got to noticing that there's all these scratches kind of running in this direction across it. The uh, gunsmith that made this just didn't do a real good job of polishing it up when we're done. And every one of those little scratches going across here is a potential stress riser where the, that spring can can break. So we want to get those, those out of there and get it polished up and, and our, all our polishing marks going lengthwise down the down this thing. So we're going to start off with a, just a piece of emery paper backed by a, a file here and start working those down and when we get get close and get those kind of smoothed out then we'll take it over to the uh, buffing wheel and really polish it up real nice. Okay, so it's time to heat up these springs and bend them back into shape. And we've got, you can use a couple of different types of heat sources. You know, we can use the, um, just a little propane torch like this, if that's what you have. Um, you can actually get uh, matte gas, which is in a little cylinder like this too, and burns a little bit hotter. But I prefer an oxyacetylene torch since I have one here. We can control the flame a little bit better with an oxyacetylene torch. Um, these, these, uh, Springs are high carbon spring steel, of course, and, and what makes them a, a spring steel is, is that carbon content in them, higher carbon content than uh, just mild steel. So when we're working with the oxyacetylene torch, we want to make sure that we have what we call a carburizing flame. So it has excess carbon in the flame. So if we've got oxygen and acetylene mixing, acetylene has the carbon in it, 
oxygen doesn't. And if we, if we have an oxidizing flame, which is higher to oxygen, then we're going to be robbing some of the carbon out of the spring steel. So here's, here's how you tell if you have a, a uh, oxidizing flame or a carburizing flame. We'll fire this up. There's three different flames on coming out of the tip there. And uh, so we'll start that up with the acetylene, give it a little oxygen, hopefully just a little. There we go. So you see the, the full length flame is out about here. And then as we uh, give it a little more oxygen, we get this little really bright, bright flame right here out of the tip. It's only a quarter or three eighths of an inch long. And then we have another flame that we can adjust back and forth. And I'm, I'm using the oxygen to adjust it, but you can do the same with acetylene. So if we bring that tip, that middle flame all the way back, we're neutral. Um, and if we go a little further, then we're oxidizing. So we, we want more carbon. So a, a, a carburizing flame is one where we've got that middle flame out there a ways about like that. So we'll, we've actually got a, a carbon rich environment now that we're heating with. Okay, so we're just going to, this is the one that the tip was bent up quite a little bit. And we're going to, we're going to kind of concentrate on, on heating that area up first and bend that. See, it doesn't take very long. Now we'll, we'll get this on it and this and see if we can't bend that to where it's the right. See, it's, even though it's cooled some, it, it's still soft and pliable. I fiddled around there a little longer than I should have. Okay, now we're going to hold it up against this, this spring that has the right um, contour to it, and it is absolutely perfect. I don't know if you, you can see that or not, but now we've got that tip exactly where it needs to be. Now, the other part of this spring that needs to be fixed up a little bit and it had a little bit of a bend to the left so we're gonna we're gonna heat up that leg it's gonna take a little longer because it's thicker back there we don't want to get just carried away we can take our time a little bit this is a pretty thick spring now you can see it's starting to get a little red in the middle there we want to get it fairly even so that it, it doesn't bend just in one spot it really needs to bend more down towards the base of that leg. Okay, now we're we're fairly even. And we're going to see if we can't bend that over. So now we've got a little dog leg in it. We're going to go back and tap that out. Okay, so now we'll hold that one up to it, and I think we're pretty darn good shape. Probably can't see that very well, but it looks like it's centered up really nicely right now. So we're in good shape there. We're going to go ahead and uh, heat this up, try to get it good and even all the way across, and then we'll... we'll uh, Quench it in this hydraulic oil right here. We'll concentrate some of the heat down here at the thickest part. We want to get this to a, a cherry red, no hotter. Nice thing about the steel is we can tell the heat from the colors. Okay, we're starting to get some red in the thinner parts. Concentrate it here. We don't want any oranges or, or yellows in it. That's, that's too hot. We've got, it's really hard to get a, a even, there, we're just about even with a, a good cherry red now. Get that out on the tip a little bit more, and we quench.
Okay, so there's one down. Um, that spring now is extremely hard, but it's also extremely brittle. So that's where the tempering process comes in. We'll have to draw that back to a, a, a consistency that, that is still hard, but has some flex in it. At this point, if we put this in the gun and, and work that spring, it would just snap. It's about, about like glass. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the other one real quick. Um, and, and then we'll uh, get to the tempering process. Okay, so we've got two hardened springs now. And you can see the profile on them is virtually identical. Even though they started out with completely different profiles. Now we're going to clean up all that old burnt oil off of them. And, and take them over to the casting pot and uh, temper them up. Okay, so we're getting ready to temper these springs now. And we've got some choices um, for the heat source to temper these springs. Of course, if we've got a, a heat treat oven, um, that's the simplest way. But our oven is for uh, color case hardening, a big oven. And it's hardly worth firing that thing up uh, just to do a couple of little springs like this. Of course, we can use our, our, our torches, either an oxyacetylene or a little propane torch. But it's hard to get an even heat. And, and hold it there for a little while while those molecules rearrange themselves um, which is what that tempering process does to, to soften those springs up just a little bit so they've got that give. So what I like to do is, is use a, a casting pot and, and we can use either, either just regular old lead or in this case this little casting pot I use here is for uh, uh, niter bluing, fire bluing. So if we use this, we get the extra benefit, we get a, a pretty blue color at the end. Which is what we would want if we were using one of the other uh, uh, mediums as well for, for heating. And, and if, you, if you don't, haven't ever seen one of these, this is a color chart that tells you um, temperatures of metal by the color of the metal. So that's very, very helpful. So we're just about up to temperature now, up to 600 degrees, where we want to get that uh, kind of a bright to, to medium blue color. And so we're going to get uh, set up here and, and uh, show you how we get these springs in the pot and blued up and tempered. Okay, so you can see that kind of a pinkish color on, on top of the uh, bluing salts there. These are, these are actually niter blue salts. It, it, uh, it's a little strange to think that something so pink will actually turn something blue. Um, if you can see okay here, we've got our, our thermometer in here and we're right at 600 degrees. So we're ready to to dunk these springs in here. And what I've done is I just got these springs in this wire so that uh, they're not going to touch the bottom, they're not going to touch each other and whatnot. And then we've de thoroughly degreased them uh, with acetone and then dried them off. Um, one of the things you really have to be careful of with niter bluing salts is getting any kind of uh, moisture in there. They, it'll just erupt those salts out of there and burn the heck out of you if you're not careful. So I'm going to put some gloves on real quick here and some safety glasses and then we'll dunk those in there. They should be good and dry and, and whatnot, but it never hurts to be careful when you're working around these bluing salts. Okay, so here we go. We're going to dunk them in. We're right at just a little over 600 now. And I'm going to cool it off just a little bit. And we're just going to leave them in there for a little while. You know, it, more time doesn't hurt at all. Um, in fact, the, the biggest problem is, is too little time. You can get it up to the right temperature, get the right color. But if you don't keep it there for a little while, those molecules don't get rearranged. And, and you don't get a good even temper. Okay, so we've had these in here for about five minutes now, a little more. Let's pull them out. and Of course, we can't see real well because we've got all the kind of... Stuff off the top of that those bluing salts on them, but uh, looks like they they've blued up nicely. We're going to hang them here, let them air dry for a while and cool off, and then we'll come back and we'll we'll scrub those off real good with water, and then we'll use some WD-40 to to clean the water off of them so they don't rust up or anything. Okay, so now it's time to clean these things off. We'll just dunk them in water a little bit. Um, get the wire off of them and get them cleaned up get just basically getting the bluing salts off of them and then when we get that done we'll 
get them oiled up so we don't get any rust and they ought to be good to go they look like they're they're pretty pretty light colored the the blue we you know if we were actually going for color rather than the uh just the temper we'd leave them in there a little longer to get that uh fire blue look got a kind of a chunk of bluing salts on the back there okay so yeah we just got kind of a a real light blue color on there and we'll set that one aside get this other one out of here and of course you don't want to do this right next to your your niter pot or you accidentally flick a little uh drop of water in there and the whole thing blows up on you okay so we'll kind of dry those off and and uh, hit them with some wd-40 and they're ready to go Okay, so we went from having a couple of springs that were basically useless, um, you know, the wrong wrong uh, contour, one of them, I'm sure the heat treat was gone, they've been through a house fire, to having two very useful springs now. And uh, the, the moment of truth now is if we can flex these and they, they come back to shape and don't break and don't bend, then we know we got the heat treat and the uh, temper right. So both these are doing that. And uh, so we, if you've ever tried to find a knockoff spring for a, a set trigger gun, and these work in the 73, 76, and 86, um, you know they're hard to come by. And if you can find them, they're about 75 to 100 bucks a piece. So we, by knowing how to, to heat treat these and, and temper them properly, we saved ourselves 150, 200 bucks. So I hope you learned something. This was kind of enjoyable for me. Um, until we get that other spring back in that 76 and get out there and do some shooting, happy trails from the Cinnabar.